what this is. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, oh, what a match, what a battle. Devastation. I've never seen anything like that. We're talking about this dramatic hand for the next 50 years. A new legend is born in Hollywood, tonight on the World Poker Tour. The World Poker Tour is a series of international poker tournaments featuring the biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. Tonight, the WPT rolls into Southern California for a high-stakes blockbuster that could only be found in Tinseltown. 309 players lined up in L.A. to slap down $5,000 each for a shot at the $1.5 million prize pool. Stars were everywhere. But in a poker tournament, you need to win to stay in. Now, only six remain to fight over the title, the cash, and the coveted $25,000 entry into the WPT Championship, a season-ending Las Vegas shootout worth millions. Six players, $1.5 million. In Hollywood, a legend will be named and a fortune won or lost here on the World Poker Tour. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton along with Vince Van Patten. We are at the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles, California. Welcome back to LA, Mike, my hometown. And let's not forget what happened here at the bike last year. Well, I sure remember. It was the most explosive final table of the season on the World Poker Tour last year. And who could forget Han Lee, the kamikaze kid, the guy who steamrolled and destroyed <laughs> nearly everyone in his path. He was like an out-of-control chef at Benihana, okay? He was slicing and dicing his way through the tournament, but then he went up against the suave guy from Lebanon, Chris Karagoulian, who tasted victory that week. But that was then, and this is now, and we're back, and we expect nothing less here tonight. And Vance, there's a lot of tension in the air. It's been building up all week, and we're about to get to that first pitch. I have one regret, is that I'm not at that final table, of course. Well, I'm with you there, Vance, because first place in this tournament tonight is nearly $600,000, and we have a really tough, world-class field of players out there tonight. Let's meet these guys. On the short stack with 89,500 chips is Chip Jet. Chip is a 28-year-old professional poker player, an aggressive, fearless player who just missed a first-place finish in last season's Party Poker Million. And Vince, in case he gets a hold of some chips, they better buckle up because he likes to go way beyond the speed limit. All right, next is Mel Judah from Australia. Mel has been a top professional for many years. He is one of the true gentlemen on the tour. And in a former life, believe it or not, he was a ladies' hairdresser. In fourth position is 43-year-old Farzad Banyadi, known as Fred in the poker world. Fred's a solid, well-respected pro, and Vince, Fred's favorite TV show is the World Poker Tour. How do you like that? Well, I'm sure he's hoping in a couple hours to like it a whole lot more. All right, next to Fred in seat number two with 176,000 is Irishman Phil Locke. Now, this guy is a true eccentric, but I promise you, he is a brilliant poker mind. It's going to be fun to watch him tonight. In second position is a poker legend, T.J. Cloutier from Dallas, Texas. T.J. is the most successful player in the history of tournament poker. In fact, he's won this event three times in a row, a feat that's never been duplicated before or since in the poker world. Vince, he is one of the greats in the game. It's going to be a privilege to watch him work here tonight. Absolutely. Paul Phillips is in seat number five. He is our chip leader by a huge margin. They call him .com because Paul made a pile of money in the Internet. And with this chip lead, Mike, if .com doesn't go bust, he is going to win the lion's share of a $1.5 million prize pool. So the players are all set. Let's go down to the felt. Go ahead, shuffle up and deal. Well, here we go. Last year we had 89 players at this event. This year, 309. A whopping success. There's a big difference, Vance. Over a million and a half dollars in the prize pool this year. The winner's going to make close to $600,000 cash for first prize. Who's going to get lucky? And here we go, Mike. Now, Fred Bagnotti has inherited the dealer button. The blinds are put in by Phil Locke and TJ. Chip Jet will be the first to act. And look at this. He's picked up a huge hand. Two queens in the first hand. He's on the short stack. He's got to love it. Why not? Beautiful hand right out of the blocks. Paul Phillips has also got an interesting hand. He's got A7 of diamonds. He is the whopping chip leader. 
Hall is not going to call. Mel Judah going out. And, of course, we are very, very fortunate because we're using the WPT cam. We get to see the players' cards. Well, you're right, Vince. It is exciting to see the decisions these players are faced with. Fred Bagnotti looks at a king jack of clubs. Pretty nice hand. He folds in position, though. Phil Locke folds and TJ folds. Yeah, Chip Jet's going to blast off the runway first hand, takes the pot. Vince, before we get too far along, let's explain the rules to the folks. Well, we are right here in the land of make-believe. Why don't we get a real star to explain them? Let's do it. Thanks, guys. The game is No Limit Texas Hold'em. It's the top fuel drag racing of poker. Once you play it, it's all you want to play. To start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then five community cards are placed face up on the table. Each player combines his two hidden cards with the community cards to make the best five card poker hands. Betting is what this game is really about. After the first two cards are dealt, a round of betting follows. Then the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. This is called the flop. Another round of betting follows the flop. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card, or turn card, on the table, and more betting ensues. The last card, the river, is turned up on the table, touching off the final round of betting. You turn over your cards, see who wins, and hopefully it's me. Oh, it makes the game sound so easy, doesn't it, Mike? Well, it sure does, Vance. You know, it's so great to have Lou Diamond Phillips and these other stars supporting the World Poker Tour. They have really caught on and getting excited about playing and watching these events on the World Poker Tour. Yeah, Lou's a good guy, and you know, he's becoming a pretty good poker player, too. Also, his buddy Ben Affleck came out here and played the tournament. A lot of guys. Okay. On.com, Paul Phillips, and he goes out this time. Mel's got a 9-4. He's not going to play. Fred has an 8-deuce. He's also not going to play. Now, here comes the Unabomber with a nice hand on the button. Ace-Jack offsuit. He's in that great position on the button. It's the most favorable position in a poker game because you get to act last on all the rounds of betting other than round one. I feel that going at it, looks like. He's betting 16500 But you know what? He just ran into T.J. Cloutier, right. who's got 55, a pair of fives. T.J. Cloutier is coming over the top. Rightfully so. Here he goes. Oh. He's raising 40000 The crowd loves this. Well, the crowd knows T.J. is a poker star, a superstar player. He don't push this ex-football star around too long. Now Chip Jet looks at an ace four. He's not going to play it. It's going to be two-handed. Let's see if Phil is going to call this down. Got ace-jack against a pair of fives. Phil is shriveling up under that hood a little bit. He's starting to look a little like a turtle. Now you see the terrible decision that Phil Locke has faced with right now, Vince. I mean, this is a tough play with ace-jack right here when a man re-raise you with it. Especially this man. Look at this. Phil looks like he's going to do something crazy here. Well, he glanced over at TJ. wonder if he picked up something there. Is he going to put TJ to the test here? Yeah. Come on. He's all in. Oh, man, I got to love this play. He has done it. He has done it. He has gone all in. You talk about the guts. I didn't say anything yet. Now look at TJ says, I didn't call yet. Oh. He's thinking about this. What? He's got a decision. What he's doing is counting out the nearly 100000 it's going to cost him to call. He's seeing how much he has left to play with if he calls and loses this pot. That's what he's analyzing right now. And I tell you, the crowd loves the spunk of Phil Locke, and they just want TJ to go after him. Look at this. They well, love TJ. I, I can tell you right now, if they saw his hand and saw he had ace-jack offsuit and made that play against one of the great legends of poker, they would really stand up and salute this guy. That is a bold play to raise the guy with more chips than you have with an ace-jack offsuit. That is unbelievable poker. This is no game for the meek. We're watching it here. TJ's hair got a little grayer after that raise. I like to call him the Paul Bunyan of poker. He is bigger than life. We'll have folk songs about this kind of guy. What will he do here with his fives? It's a very, very tough spot for TJ to be in right now with two fives. Right now, I bet he's wishing that he wouldn't have raised before the flop. He would have just called it and seen the flop. 
That's true. Now let's not forget he made the final table in Reno with a pair of sevens. He was knocked out. He's back again. Does he want to play fives? TJ knows he's best even money to win this pot. His opponent has to have at least two overcards. Does he want to gamble here? That's the decision he's faced with. And look at Phil Locke. He's closed himself up. <laughs> he doesn't let him see anything, Vince. And TJ folds. And the Unabomber's picked this pot up by bold, aggressive play, Vince. You gotta love this guy if you could still see him. This is what he's famous for in the poker world. <laughs> well, he doesn't want to give any information about himself away to anybody. He takes a bow. Well done. I signed up for the thing, thinking 200 maximum. And somebody said there was 300 people signed up. I went, oh, this was a mistake. I didn't have the chutzpah to go up to the front desk and say, I want my money back. My name is Phil Locke. One minute. And I shouldn't be here. Well, let me tell you, Vance, he shows a lot of heart to make a play like that, especially against a TJ Cloutier, especially this early in the tournament, especially for all his chips. This is what poker's all about. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. We play because poker's not a scratch-off ticket, a half-court jumper, or a knock on wood. It's no game of luck, poker. It's a game of patience and well-timed aggression. We know when we play, a little luck helps. But luck can't explain why final tables have so many familiar faces. We play at FullTiltPoker.com. Mike, this is Don Adams' house from Get Smart. We used to play poker here, and Don loved to bluff. He would turn the cards over, and then in that Maxwell Smart voice would say, sorry about that, Chief. Why'd you let him bluff? Call him. So long, Don. In Southern California, cards are in the air, and the legend of poker is heating up. Welcome back to a wild world poker tour where Phil Locke, the courageous gambler who looks like he's been outfitted at a 99 cent store, has <laughs> taken over. Well, Vince, there's a pretty good poker player under that sweatshirt and behind those glasses, and so far he's holding his own against some of the best in the world. Let's see if he can keep it up. As the Unabomber's chips go up, the price of poker is going up, Vince. We're now playing with a $1,000 ante and four and $8,000 blinds. For the people that are confused about it, blinds are initial bets you have to put in before you get to look at your cards. That is to instigate action. Okay, Mel has the button, which means TJ will be the first to act here. He looks at King-9, folds. Chip Jet not going to play a Queen-8. Now we're over to our chip leader, Paul Phillips. He's picked up not much of a hand, Jack Deuce of Clubs. But look at this. He looks like he's interested. He's going for his weapons. He's tired of seeing the Union Bomber take command of this tournament. He's the chip leader here, and he wants to get in there, and he's doing so right here with the Jack Deuce of Clubs. Mel Judah going out with 9-7. Fred looks at a Jack-8 offsuit, not going to call. Back to Phil Locke. He's picked up a real hand. He's got a pair of fives. Yes, he has. Look, he takes a deep breath. He hangs his head down. Oh, the pain of it all, Phil. The hand notices the speed limit. Does he want to speed with him? That's just one of these. Is, all right. He's going to play with him. He calls a 24,000. Remember, he had 8,000 in the big blind. Yes, he does. He just calls. So it's 16,000 more. He calls. We're going to have a flop. Guy seems to be making all the right moves today. Look, he looks down, he puts his hands over his ears. He doesn't even want to see the flop. Says a prayer. Here it comes. Flop comes ace, king, seven with two clubs. Now, this is no help to Phil Locke. It does give Paul Phillips a flush draw. Well, he has four to the flush, but actually Phil is in front with the pair of fives. Oh, man, look at him. He's getting He's ready again, getting it looks like. Chips. What a bold, aggressive player this guy is, Vince. He is betting into the chip leader again with two fives when it's ace-king seven out there. Oh, I love it. And his opponent raised the pot. Amazing. $31,000 bet right here. This guy's my idol. I want to party with this guy. Then I want to get a restraining order. 
Now, Vince, if you're sitting in Paul Phillips' seat right now, your first thought is, why is this guy leading out and betting into me? You know, would he do that with an ace? I raised the pot originally. If he had a hand, you would think the guy would check raise to you. Very suspicious here by Paul. Oh, well, Paul Phillips, it's like, what do you think you're doing? I'm the chip leader here. You know, he does have the flush draw. Yes, he does. He's not a folder. He is playing. He loves it. He's called it. And that puts 120000 in the pot, Vince. We're going to 4th Street. He'd love to hit the flush, but he doesn't so far. Nine of spade comes off. No help to either player. Phil still in front with the fives. Does he have the, the nerve to bet this? Well, there's a lot of money sitting out there. Will he keep the lead? Will he fire at this pot one more time? He checks. This is turning into a game of chicken right now. Now Paul's faced with a decision here. He can draw it a flush for free where it doesn't cost him any money. Or he can go ahead and bet and try to pick this pot up right here. What's he going to do, Vince? Check. He's going to check it. We're going to see the last card. Wants to get that free card off of there. He didn't so, get it. Four of spades. No help to either player. Phil still in front with the fives. We know that. But does he feel secure? What do you do now, Phil? I can assure you he doesn't feel secure. He oh, checks. He's definitely checking. And this is just giving the red carpet treatment right into Paul's lap. Well, in Paul's mind, he knows the only way he can win this pot is to bet right here. There's no way the Jack Deuce can be good here in his mind. Does he want to take a stab at this pot? It's the only way he can win it is to fire out at it. 80. Yes, he, he says 80,000. He says 80. He's going to bet into Phil. He pulls the trigger, Vince, for 80,000 right here. A bold bet on the last card with absolutely nothing. I'll tell you one thing. If Phil calls us, this would be the call of a lifetime. How it turns so quickly here in poker. If he would call here, it would be the play of the day. There's no question about that. But when your opponent leads out and bets 80,000, and you're looking at two fives with all those overcards out there. And he folds. He's going to go away. He lays them down. Paul Phillips picks his pot up. What a great bet at the river by Paul Phillips right there, our chip leader. You know, I hate showing hands, but there's so many people here. you got to see that. Look, he's showing the crowd the Jack Deuce. The Unabomber gets up. Cold Stone Bluff, ladies Cold and gentlemen. Cold Stone Bluff. Well done. Vince, this is talking smack at its finest. Phil Locke is talking to himself off on the side. <laughs> you talk about rubbing oh. it in. <laughs> he playfully comes over to Paul. Uh, well, you know, you can compare to this the NBA stars. Right there, Paul Phillips is saying, you better play a little better D on me than that or I'm going to take this away from you. But what poker you're watching right there. What a play by Paul Phillips. The nerve of him to bet 80000 on the river with that hand. I don't need the money. The half a million dollars would not change my life. I've seen how many times people tighten up and lose courage because they're thinking about that payout jump that's right around the corner. My name is Paul Phillips. My only goal is to win. Look at him with his beautiful fiance in the stands. Our chip leader taking control of this game. And right now, the Unabomber is taking his hood off, Vince. There's a little steam under that hood, so he's taking the hood off to get a little air, I think. I didn't know what he looked like, really. <laughs> Action's going to be on Fred Bagnani, who's been kind of quiet. Freddie has ace nine of diamonds this time. Oh, he's starting to load up, Mike, like he's going to bet this thing. 25,000. So he does. He makes it 25. About 25,000. Now, Phil's picked up a king-queen offsuit. He leans back in his chair. And he's coming right back again. He's not oh. letting that last pot phase him, Vance. Guy loves the action. TJ's out. Chip's going out. Paul Phillips with a Motown jack and a five. The crowd is falling in love with that bluff by Paul Phillips. Wants him to play again. And they moan when he folds, Vance. <laughs> Mel's out, and it's going to be two-way action here. Ace nine against King Queen. Here comes the flop. Flop comes ace, ten, six with two hearts. And that's great for Fred. He's hit the pair of aces. And it gives the inside straight draw to Phil Locke. How is Fred going to play this? I check. And he check. checks. He checks with the top pair here. Pretty interesting since he's only got about 70,000 oh, left. He's then. doing a little trap play. Let's see if he can trap the Unabomber. Right here, Phil Locke will take a free card off to try to catch his state for nothing. 
Or he could try to bet and just pick up the pot right here, and that's what he's doing. This guy has a lot of guts. He's going right into it. Thirty thousand. We'll do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. He's betting it. He's bet thirty thousand. And don't forget, Fred has got a big hand. He's got the aces. You'd think he'd want to play this pot. What to do? To call? To raise? Hard to imagine he'd fold. I'm going all in. He's going all in. Yeah, he's doing it. He did make the play. He's check raised. And Phil Locke, you got a problem. Well, his problem is he's wondering why did I bet here. I could have taken a free card off to try to make this straight. Now I got to call forty thousand more to try to catch it. Well, his erratic play was very successful early on. I wish I didn't bet. Wanted to continue with this charade, this one-card shot. The raise is thirty-nine thousand five hundred. You're looking good so far. I know that. You're looking good so far. The hood comes off. He's trying to get a little more breathing space. Does he want to put another 40000 in this pot to try to catch it straight? That is a question. Okay. He's not going to gamble. The Unabomber folds. A nice check raise right there by Fred Bagnotti to win that pot. And that's nice, solid poker play. Fred Bagnotti. And Phil Locke gasping for air there. Well, look, he puts his hands up in the air, Vince. God, that was a bad bet, Philly boy. He says it's a bad bet, and right now that's two pots in a row. He's talking to himself a little bit, Vince. You know, he knows he didn't keep the lead where he could have won that pot against Paul Phillips. Here he made a bet when he thinks he should have checked now. Right now, I guarantee you he feels like he sort of bumbled things the last two pots in a row here. Well, with that pickup, Fred Bagnotti, he gets back in the hunt some now. Paul Phillips has about 760,000, our chip leader. Fred Bagnotti now in fourth place with 150,000. And on the tail end still, and been very quiet today, Chip Jet with about 70,000. We are watching expert poker here at the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles. Got to be on Chip Jet, who's picked up a 9-8. He's not going to play. And Paul folds. Paul folds. Mills out. Fred Bignani looks at a 9-5. Also and out. Folds, and now we're at the battle of the two blinds. And Phil, say it ain't so. You got a pair this time. Pair of sevens. Well, that's a good hand against a blind. It certainly is. This guy seems to be in every pot. Well, he has a hand this time in the blind. Everybody's going to play a pair of sevens out of the small blind against the big blind. He's going to raise it. Comes in for 25000 There is no rest for the weary. TJ quickly goes all in. Yes, he does. He has an ace-10, and he's... Oh, an amazingly bold bet by TJ Cloutier right there, raising 280000 more. The crowd chanting TJ, making this legend even more legendary. Well, I can tell you right now, what Phil Locke is thinking about right now is, why would this guy raise me all his chips here? Does he, if he had a real powerful hand, wouldn't he make a smaller raise? So it's a very curious, bold raise that TJ's made, and Phil Locke is trying to figure out, is his two sevens indeed the best hand here? If he calls and loses this pot, he's out of here. He'll be our sixth place finisher. He has to gamble for all his chips if he wants to call here. This is very, very sharp poker we're watching. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. In Hollywood, poker legend T.J. Cloutier has gone all in and put the test to Irishman Phil Locke. Will Phil fold, or will he show what he's got under the hood? Whew, what a decision Phil Locke is faced with now, Vince. I mean, this is it. This is for all the marbles. By the way, this isn't a Paul Phillips that'll play anything with a re-raise. This is a very solid, legendary poker player, T.J. Cloutier, and that's what he's thinking also. Well, I'll tell you, there's only about a million and a half on the line here, Mike. But look at this. He's getting bold. He's doing it. He's stacking. He's going to do it. First big clash, Vince. Whoa. He is cold, and T.J. does not like this. I can tell you that right now. You got a big hand, Phil? Let's have a pair. Well, TJ's got to be happy to see that he's in a virtual even money situation here almost. Well, pretty close. A little bit of a dog. 
<laughs> the crowd doesn't know whether they like it or not. No matter what happens, brother. God bless you. When well, he gets up, they shake hands. They know it's anybody's game here, Vance. Here comes the flop. Oh, it's a bingo for TJ. 10-5-3. That's pretty big. He's hit the pair of tens on the flop. Can it hold up? Right now, Phil Locke is going to have to catch a seven, or he's going to be our sixth-place finisher, Ben. Here it comes. It's a four. Now, this means he can catch a six and make a straight also. There are outs. The hood is off. He needs a six or a seven. He doesn't get it. He's not going to do it. TJ Cloutier gets lucky to win that race. Picks up a $375,000 pot. What a daring call right there by the Unabomber. It is over for Phil Locke. Great effort. Well, the crowd gives him a nice round of applause. And give this guy credit. He came to play. He didn't sit back on his haunches. What exciting drama he added to this tournament tonight, Vince. So Phil Locke is going to be our sixth place finisher. And he'll have to go back to the WPT Players Lounge where even the free drinks can't numb the pain. But now we are down to five players. We're going at it. We're about to get started again. And it's going to be on Fred Bagnati. Now he looks down at the King Jack, known as Kojak in poker terms. And he looks a little bit like Kojak Vince. Well, I, yeah, it does a little well, bit. Here he goes. He's going to raise this. He likes it. He comes in for 24000 Oh, wait a second. I'm going to raise. He's gone up against the wall. TJ's pulled a pair of nines, and he's going to raise this mic. He says, I'm going to raise it. And the crowd more. loving this, howling in the 80, background. 80,000 more. He raises it, so he makes it 104,000 to go. And now look at this. Chip Jet on the button has picked up Ace King offsuit. He's going to call it. There we go. He's taking his stand. You can't blame him right here. He's down to 32,000 in chips. He's got a chance to triple up here virtually. It's a big hand. He's going for it. Well, you got Paul out. Mel's going out. Fred folds. 31 5. So it's down to TJ and Chip Jet. It's the classic race situation. Two nines versus Ace King. Can Chip Jet win this pot and stay alive? We're going to see a flop. TJ, Mr. Solid with his pair of nines. Going against two overcards, Ace King. That's another race situation. TJ won the last race and busted out a player. Can he do it again? Here it comes. There it is. Chip's done it. Comes ace five deuce. Well, so far he's done it. He's picked up the pair of aces. He's in front of TJ. Here comes fourth street. Now a four comes off. That means if a three comes up, they'd both have a straight and would split the pot. That would be, just, that would be so typical. Last card coming up. There it is. Chip Jet has tripled up here almost. A tremendous pot for him. He's back in the hunt. If I had to lose, that's the one I want to lose it with. And Chip Jet still happy to be aboard. He was all in that last hand. He stayed alive. Well, you are right, Mike. Chip Jet moving up. Paul that's Phillips true. still has a huge lead, but it's Mel Judah, the former ladies' hairdresser, cutting things a little close on the short stack. We started three days ago with 309. We are down to five great players here at the Legends of Poker. It's going to be on T.J. Cloutier, who's picked up an ace, jack of hearts, a big hand right now. 24. He's going to raise it. Comes in for 24,000. 24, I believe. 24,000. And Chip folds his 5-4. Chip folds. Paul Phillips with an ace-4 off suit. Paul folds. Come on. Now look at this. Mel Judah. Talk about catching a hand. He's caught the Queens this time, and he's going all in with his short stack. Well, he's thrilled to pick up a hand at this stage because he's on the short stack. He's only got 33000 in chips. Uh, Fred Bagnotti with a jack eight. Well, it's only going to cost TJ another 8000 or so to call this when it gets to him. TJ, of course, is going to call. That's what's done. I picked up all day. Mel says the first hand he's picked up all day. Mel has two Queens. He has waited for the hand he's looking for. He's got to dodge an ace here. Here we go with the flop. Flop is king eight. Deuce. Flop is king eight deuce. Not going to help TJ so far. The queens are in front. No help to TJ. Six, six of three. hearts on the turn. No help. TJ is going to have to catch an ace, or otherwise Mel is going to double up here. King on the river. It's a king on the river. Mel is going to double up and stay alive, Vince. And the hairdresser from Australia is going to take that pot. The queens hold up for him. He has done it. He's doubled up. My name is Melvin Judah. I come from London, England. I used to be a ladies' hairdresser. Women test their hairdresser to the limit. That's where I got my psychological advantages from. Because when you're dealing with too many women, you have to read them pretty well. 
And right now, Mel's feeling good. He's just doubled up. He was down to the respirator. He was down to 32,000 in chips, Vince. There's a million and a half dollars worth of chips in play, and now he's doubled up. We'll be right back with more from the Legends of Poker, right here on the World Poker Tour. Mike, the legendary film director John Houston used to have a five-card stud poker game in the afternoon, and around 12 o'clock, he would pull out a bottle of tequila, and he'd say, gentlemen, who wants to join me? And John Houston, of course, would take home all the money. Or was the whole water in the vodka bottle trick, you know? <laughs> Get in the car. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We are at the Bicycle Casino, watching five of the greats go at it. Mike, the price of poker's going up. Yes, it is, Vance. Annie's are now 1,500. Blinds are 6 and 12,000. Here we go. Right now, TJ's playing Santa Claus. He just doubled up Chip Jet and Mel Judah back to back. And Mel Judah from Australia is going to be first to make a decision. He's got 9 4 this time. He throws it away. Fred Bagnotti has an 8 7. This time he's not going to fold. Fold. There's our ranch hand, TJ, with the King Jack of Diamonds. That's a nice hand on the button. I'm very surprised he just limping in and calling, as we say. And now Chip Jett is going to call in the small blind. It cost him six more thousand with the King Four Clubs. And Paul with a Queen Ten offsuit, he checks. We're going to have three-way action here. Here comes the flop. Flop is 10, 8, 7 with two diamonds. Now Chip checks. Now look at this. Paul has hit the top pair. He's got a pair of tens with a queen kicker, and he's going to check it also. When TJ sees that opening, and he's going to bet this. Well, TJ has a big hand. He's got a, a straight draw and a flush draw. So he bets 20,000. Chip Jet is out, and now it's on Paul to make a decision. No, it's not a very big bet into a pot that's almost 44,000. I think he thinks it's a little fishy. Why did TJ limp in on the button here? Was he trapping? That's what's going through Paul's mind right well, now. He's going to call this. He does call the 20000 And why not? You know, the guy has a dot-com business, sold it for a lot of money. He's just having a good time here. Here comes 4th Street. The four, hearts. the 4 hearts comes off. Now, that's no apparent help here. The straight didn't come out in his mind, nor did the flush. Well, that's no help for TJ, but it definitely helps Paul because he's still in front with his 10s. And look at TJ looking over at Paul. Well, because it's a card that looks like no apparent help to TJ... It looks like Paul's getting some chips out here. 30. He's bet 30,000. That is a nice bet by Paul Phillips right there. But TJ quickly beats him in the pot again. Look how fast TJ's acting here, Vince. Quickly calls. Well, TJ, using a scare tactic here. Well, he has a flush and a straight draw. He has oh, a yeah. big hand. Last card coming up. The three of clubs comes off. Well, TJ is cursing the world at this point. He did not catch. And I'm sure Paul is very happy to see that card because he figures that card certainly can't help TJ any. 40. He's betting 40,000. TJ shows the King Jack of Diamonds and folds. Paul Phillips is going to take that pot away. TJ trying to say, I don't always hold the best stuff. What he's thinking is, I had a lot of cards I could win that pot with. TJ had a lot of outs, as we say. He had a straight draw, a flush draw, and two over cards. Well, Mike, I'll tell you, in poker, what you really want to know are your outs. And here is our own Shauna Hyatt with this week's Poker Corner, brought to you by Anheuser World Select. After a lifetime of gambling, one poker legend insists that the odds of any card showing up is always 50-50. You either hit it or you don't. Being philosophical can help you, but being mathematical will give you the edge. You have to know your outs in order to stay in. An out is uh, something that's going to save you from losing this pot. Whoever has the best hand, the other player has a certain amount of cards that they can hit to win. So if they have three cards in the deck that they can win with, they have three outs. The pros know instinctively how many outs they have. Let's see how you rank. It's a heads-up battle, and Chip Jet is way out in front with Ace Jack against Howard Letterer's Ace Four. The flop in turn come Jack Queen Six Four. Howard needs one more four to win. So how many outs does he have? Whoa! This is gonna shoot Chip oh. Jet right in the heart. He's got two on the river. 
Came 4-4 and he uh, liquefied my stack. That is total disgust right there. Two outs out of 44. See how it's played? Let's try another. With four players left, a monster pot comes down to Mark Safe's pocket aces against Han Lee's flush draw. With two hearts on the board, how many outs for the Kamikaze Kid? The only cards that can help his hand at that point were just the nine remaining hearts. Oh! And he loses the pot. Look at this. He jumps for joy. Look at this. Look at him. That big, beautiful eight of hearts just peeled right off and crack those aces. Now you're catching on. One last example, and here's a clue. You're going to need your fingers and toes for this one. Ted Forrest has bet all his money on a pair of eights, and Kirill Grasimov has called with a king of hearts, queen of diamonds. The board reads ace, jack, three of diamonds, seven of hearts. Of the 38 cards left, how many outs for Ted Kirill? Knows he's got to dodge a lot of bullets here. Can he do it? That gave him 17 outs. Any diamond, any king, any queen, or any ten would beat my two eights. Ted Forrest has dodged all those Knowing your outs can keep you out of trouble, but sometimes in poker, trouble finds you. That's poker. It's horrible when I have to see it, but that's poker. <laughs> well, Vince, as Paul picks up that pot, he is now in a commanding position. He has more than half the chips at the table, more than all the other four players put together. Look at the fortress and chips he's got over there, Vince. Yeah, he is dominating this table at this point. I love how he's playing today. He is mixing up his game beautifully. TJ's going to be the first to act here. He's picked up a pretty interesting hand, Jack-10 of clubs. And he just calls. He doesn't raise with that hand. He's going to try to see a flop with it. Once again, playing pretty passive with pretty strong hands. Chip folds a king three. And now it's on dot com. Ten deuce of diamonds this time. Now, this is a very famous poker hand. Doyle Brunson made it famous by winning the world championship two years in a row with this exact hand, a 10 deuce. It's now called the Doyle Brunson. Well, maybe Paul's thinking that. He must think he's Doyle Brunson right he's now. He's going up. He's going to make it 50. He's raised it to 50,000 with a 10 deuce, folks. But hold your horses in seat number one. Fred bagnotti has got a real pair of eights. Well, he is faced with a real decision here, Vince. He knows TJ just limped in. Notice he glanced his eyes over at him. He's seen Paul raise all the time. I'm moving on there. He's going all in. What a bold play by Fred Bagnotti right here, Vince. Why not? TJ quickly folds. Back to the computer genius from Frisco with a 10 deuce splashing around. He's saying to himself, did I go a little too fast? You wouldn't think he would call in this spot with a 10 deuce. Look at Fred Bagnotti. Look at him just staring Paul down, looking right through him. You got a pretty good stone face for these pressure situations. You got it. Paul says you got Paul it. folds a 10 deuce. Now, one more thing we learned here, Vince, is that Paul Phillips doesn't play the 10 deuce as well as Doyle Brunson. So Mike, Fred Bagnotti playing real solid, picking his spots. It's going to take that one. Well, Vince, I'm telling you, it wasn't so easy to put all your chips in there with two eights in that spot the way that hand was played. Give him credit. Here we go. It's going to be on Chip Jet. Chip's got queen six. He's not going to play. Paul Phillips folds a 7-3. Mel quickly folds. That's going to cost Fred six more thousand to call if he opts to play the jack nine. He's already got some money in the pot, so he's going to call it. And he calls, and TJ says, okay, give us a flop. TJ has a jack seven. So it's jack nine versus jack seven. Here comes the flop. It's jack ten seven. Oh, that is huge for TJ. He's flopped two pair. But Fred has flopped a big hand, too. He's flopped a top pair and a straight draw. He checks. But TJ quickly bets. 24,000. Now, Fred has flopped a nice hand, as we said, the top pair and a straight draw. And the way T.J. bet it right after, it looks like he could be on a bluff. I'm going to raise it. And there he goes. He's going to he raise him. He's going to raise it. He is heading for white water here. Now, let's see how much he's going to raise it, Vince. 80 more. 80 more thousand. I'm going all in. 80 more? T.J. says, I'm all in. All in. TJ quickly goes over the top, all in. Oh, yeah, TJ's going to take advantage of this. He likes where he is. The two pair on the flop. He's going all in. That's going to cost Fred his other 80000 to call it. He's got so much invested now, I don't know how he can lay it down now. Make this look like uh, 20, on, 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 on. TJ touching his chips there. 
Fred did not like that. No, get away from my chips. Let me call your bet. I'm going to see how much I have left and then see if I want to play for all my chips here. But Vince, I got to tell you, there's so much money in the pot. Hard to believe he could throw this away for another 80,000. Look at the eye, shoot over TJ. Oh, God, call. And he's, he's got a caller. He's got a caller. There's a lot of money out there. This is a $400,000 pot. And Fred doesn't like what he saw, the two pair. He knows he's a dog here. Fred is going to have to catch an eight or a nine or a ten to take the lead in this pot. Can he hang in there? Here comes 4th Street. It's a, four. a four comes off. Fred doesn't do it as of yet. TJ still in front. Fred is praying over there. Last card coming up. He needs an eight, nine, or a ten, or he's going to be out in fifth position. Here it is. It's an eight. And TJ's going to hold up. Well, they shake each other's hands. And Fred Bagnati is now our fifth place finisher. And I'll tell you, the happiest guy in the casino right now is Phil Locke because he's finally got a little company. Well, Fred gets congratulated by the crowd. You know, you can't fault him for playing his chips in that pot. You know, it's just one of those situations. He was forced to gamble there. I think he had to call once TJ set him all in. You know, a huge pot going to TJ Cloutier. Plenty more action to come right here on the World Poker Tour. Doesn't matter when you play online at PartyPoker.com. It's fun, it's easy, it's the world's largest poker room. That's the flowers. That's the flowers. On the World Poker Tour, it's back to Los Angeles with four players left in the hunt for the cash. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. T.J. Cloutier's fans are going crazy. Vince, these guys are not bashful and they're going nuts here. Well, T.J. is a living legend. I mean, he is the Paul Bunyan of poker. The crowd wants him to be victorious, and we are watching poker folklore before our very eyes. We are down to our final four now, and we have two guys in good chip position in Paul Phillips and T.J. Cloutier, and two guys who are on a very short stack, Chip Jet and Mel Judah. Down to these great four players... Back on the action, it's on chip. He folds here with the 10-3 offsuit. Look at this. Paul Phillips now picks up a pair of queens. Lovely ladies. Oh, He's yeah. up against the two blinds. And look at this. He tilts the head. 35. Makes it casual 35. 35,000 he comes in for. Mel folds. On T.J. Cloutier, who's also got a nice hand. He's got ace-jack. Well, T.J.'s going to play with him. Well, four-handed, you can't blame him. you got to like your ace-jack. It's going to be T.J. against Paul again. Ace-jack against a pair of queens. So here we go. It's ace-jack versus two queens. Oh, oh man, this could be trouble for T.J. Here comes jack, six, deuce. He's flopped the top pair with top kicker, but he's up against an over pair in the two queens. And look at this. Paul massaging this acting job here. He's going to bet a hundred grand. TJ checked the two jacks. Paul bet a hundred thousand on the flop. A big bet right here for TJ to have to play. I call. TJ has called him. Whoa. Folks, we have the two chip leaders clashing in a monster pot right now. Oh, man. A road to disaster for TJ. Now, Paul Phillips is wondering what does he have? It's two queens versus a pair of jacks. There are two clubs on the flop. The two chip leader's going to go at it. And the nine of clubs comes off on the turn. Now, TJ is the first one to act here. 200,000. 200,000 TJ bets. With this top pair of two jacks. And Paul Phillips squirms his way around in his seat now. 200,000. 
Now remember, Paul's got two queens, and he has a queen of clubs, Vince. So he also has a flush draw with his queens. Well, we know he has the superior hand at this point. But the way TJ's playing it, he's trying to second guess it and say, hey, did he, did he flop a set on me or something? Well, he's reviewing this hand. The way it's come down, he raised before the flop, TJ called him. TJ checked on the flop. He bet 100,000, TJ called him again. And now all of a sudden, when three clubs come out, TJ leads out and bets 200,000. What does he do now? Four players here, we're down to four. That means your hands go up in value. Well, pair of queens you. is huge, it's an over pair at this point. Crowd getting very vocal and boisterous, and all of a sudden they've decided that Paul Phillips is going to be their punching bag. If Paul plays this pot and wins this pot, you can pretty much put this tournament in a package and put a bow on it for Paul Phillips here because he'll be taking out the legendary T.J. Cloutier and have 90% of the chips in the tournament. I'm going to look stupid on TV if I fold this hand. Well, he's right about that. And the rail won't respect me if I fold. That's, that's the real problem. I pass. He no! Passes. Oh, Vince, don't tell me he lays this hand down. Little does TJ know how lucky he is on this pot that Paul lays this hand down. He had the better hand and the better draw both. Oh, did TJ Cloutier get lucky to stay alive in this tournament by Paul laying that hand down there, Vince? Well, you talk about sometimes you outsmart yourself. I'm either going to look like an idiot or a genius when that one gets on TV. I don't know which. He's 100% right about that, Vince. Yeah, and sorry to say for his sake. He's right the first time. Well, Vince, you hit the nail on the head here. It looks like Paul Phillips outsmarted himself in this hand. Now, let's go back and take a look at this hand. The flop came jack, six, deuce, then the nine of clubs came on the turn. Now, Paul Phillips got an over pair and a flush draw. Yet when TJ bet 200000 after not ever raising him in this pot, he lays this hand down. Vince, you know, it looks to me like he just outthought himself here. Well, it was a tight lay down, no doubt. But, Mike, I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad that Paul Phillips is a wealthy guy because he's going to need a new TV after he smashes this one in after seeing the show. Believe me. <laughs> You're right. Instead of TJ being out of this tournament like yeah. he probably should be, he now takes the chip lead. That's An amazing hand right there. Well, I like the way this game is going. There's a great flow to it. One of the great championships in L.A. Legends of Poker. Anyone can show up at a tournament. Anyone can play. Well, you're right, Vance. There was a huge jump of numbers and a lot of new faces. This is great for poker. Our own Shauna Hyatt took a look at all the excitement here at the Bicycle Casino. No Limit Texas Hold'em. Have you got what it takes? Yeah. You've seen the thrilling competition every week on the World Poker Tour, and now you want your piece of the WPT action. This is clearly an investment. At the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles, rest assured, you are not alone. On a daily basis, we see new faces. We get calls all the time for people that want to play in that event that was on TV. You may have played in your home game for years, but it's still a little intimidating the first time you walk into a poker room. Don't be intimidated. Come to our club. We invite you to participate in Poker College that will teach you all the basics. Hi, Shauna. Have a seat. They deal you in. Cost you nothing. You sit down and you play. We have a teacher. They show you the fundamental process of the game. So then you could have come back to your chips as many times as you wanted. Poker College at the Bicycle Casino is just like any other place of higher learning, except for the gourmet restaurant, blackjack and Asian games, table massages, and drink girls. So grab your diploma and roll on into the bike. Find the action you want. Three, six, hold on. And let the competition know what they're in for. All right, guys, I got to warn you. I've been to poker college. <laughs> TJ is our new chip leader by, by, by just a little bit. The crowd loves TJ. He's a legend in the poker world. The crowd is loving it. They are chanting his name. TJ, TJ. It's going to be back on TJ. And this time he looks at a four deuce. He's not going to play it. Now Chip is going to there goes Chip. In. He's got king nine of spades. Well, you can't blame him for going all in here. He's got to make a stand and do something. Total of 40, all right, back to Paul Phillips, who could be tilting here a little bit. He's got a king queen, and he's got a decision. Well, Chip only has 40,000 in chips. 
Paul's gonna call. And why not? I notice Mel has them both beat with ace high. Yeah. But he's gonna get out of their way most likely in hopes that Paul can knock Chip Jet out of this tournament. He's got an ace baby, ace three off suit. Not a good hand. One guy's gone all in, another man's called him. But he's thinking about this. Does he want to gamble with an ace three off suit here? I wouldn't think so, but maybe he does. He gets out of the way. And Chip turns over his king nine. It's king nine versus king queen. And right now, Paul's in a dominating position, Vince. Paul Phillips is saying, hey, I can come back now. Here comes the flop. Flop jack six deuce. And looking rough on Chip so far. He's going to have to have two spades in a row or hit a nine. Otherwise, he's going to be out of here. It's an eight. Eight's not going to help him. Chip Jet has to have a nine or he's going to be our fourth place finisher. Here we go. He doesn't get it. It is over for Chip Jet. Fine effort. Has to walk away. Fourth place. A nice tournament for Chip. He didn't ever have any chips at the final table. He was always a short stack. Yet he played well. He finishes in fourth place. He takes home $100,000. $425. Great tournament by Chip Jet, and here's Shauna with our fourth place finisher. So do you think that Paul's going to hang on, or is he going to blow up? What do you think? Um, now that he's given up the chip lead to TJ, uh, experience might just take over, and uh, I'd put my money on TJ at this point. Well, you've made two final tables. Are we going to see you again soon? I hope so. I mean, I'll be playing them all, so uh, ho hopefully real soon with, with more chips. <laughs> I wish you all the luck. Thank you. We're going to take a small break. We're down to our final three players. Stay with us. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. Drop the middle one, and then catch it on your pinky, and then spin it. I guess the only way to learn is to get three chips in practice. Welcome back to the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles for the final table of the Legends of Poker. I'm Shauna Hyatt, and here's a recap of the action so far. Early on, it was a wild Hollywood poker party, but the Texas legend T.J. Cloutier ended the fun for Irishman Phil Locke and the stone-faced Farzad Bagnati. Chip Jet was the next all-in to go all-out, and now only three remain. A Texas rounder, a computer genius, and a stylish tournament pro. In this Hollywood story, one poker player is going from rags to riches. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. I'm Vince Van Patten with Mike Sexton. We're down to three players, Mike. Well, you're right, Vince, but two of them have all the chips. And right now, Mel June is looking up against Mount Everest, a rock and a hard place there. He's going to have to do something fast to get back in this contest. Who is going to take the first prize of $579,000? Well, Vince, with three players left here at the Legends of Poker, one of those players is a true legend of poker, T.J. Cloutier. So well-respected, well-liked on the poker circuit, and it's going to be on T.J. once again. He's got a hand this time. He's got a pair of threes. 28. He comes in for 28,000. 28, Back to Paul Phillips, who looks at a 10 and a 5. He folds. Paul folds. Mel looks down to find the king ten of spades and says, "All in." I got a pair. You got a pair, Mel? Well, T.J. says, "I got to call you. I got a pair." So it's two threes versus the king ten of spades here. Could be it for Mel. He could get knocked out. He has to outdraw the great T.J. Cloutier. He stands up. He's looking at the flop. Bingo! Right on the flop. He's ten nine five. Incredible flop for Mel. He breaks out into a smile. He knows T.J. is going to have to catch a three now, or he's going to double up. Turn is an eight. Not going to happen on Fourth Street. Mel is still in front. Can he survive, or will he be taking that plane back to Australia? He dodges a three. He sits back down. He has doubled up. Well done by the former ladies' hairdresser. Yeah, that plane trip back to Australia has to wait a little longer. Mel Judah taking the pot from TJ. Well, he decided to gamble a little bit there, Vince, with the King-10. It's a gamble because he knows that TJ is going to call with anything he has. So, therefore, he was pretty much gambling with the King-10. But as we said, he's going to step it up a notch. He understands now is the time he's got to start playing if he wants to win this title. TJ takes it in stride. He's not going to get rattled over that play. 
TJ Cloutier has won more championship poker tournaments than anybody. No one sets a record like that without talent, brains, and a whole lot of heart. It's nice to go to the table. Oh, I got to play with you? I got every move that's ever been down the pipe. Everyone knows TJ. With 55 major wins, the fame of this Texas rounder has echoed around the world. I was walking down the streets of Paris and people come up, we saw you on TV and this and that. Everywhere, Germany, Paris, London. This poker is just taken off like you couldn't believe. But recently, the most successful run in poker history almost came to an end. About four weeks ago, I felt a bad feeling in my arm. It was a kind of a dull ache. So they sent me to the hospital. They said that I had had a heart attack. One month after emergency surgery, TJ is back on his feet and back at the tables, his wife Joy at his side. She still doesn't know what hand beats what hand in poker. All she knows is that when I push all my chips in, if I come back with it, I'm a winner. If I'm not, I'm, a, I'm up from the table. See you later, boys. She knows she's my rock. She's a hell of a woman, that's all I can tell you. TJ Cloutier, a lifetime of success, and it's not over yet. We still got a lot of playing to do. We see TJ's wife, Joy, in the audience. She comes to all of TJ's championship events and watches him play these tournaments. Here we go once again, on Mel this time. Okay, Mel's gonna go out on TJ. He's got a queen nine of hearts, pretty good hand. He just calls. Ball Phillips. He looks down at a 10 deuce. The old Doyle Brunson famous hand. Now remember, he played that earlier. It did not pay off from, let's see if it does this time. Well, he's in the big blind with it. He stuck with it this time. Flop comes ace, ace, three. Two bullets on the board, on the flop. Notice that TJ has flopped a flush draw, however. So it's a good flop for him. And he quickly flicked that finger with the old finger check. Opened up the door for Paul. He's checked, and here Paul's trying to rogue this pot. He's bet 13,000 with TJ not remotely close to thinking he has an ace here because he didn't raise before the flop, so he calls him. He's got that flush draw, and he's calling, and Paul is sick about that. Let's see 4th Street. The turn is a jack of clubs. TJ checks. Now Paul's assessing this hand. TJ called him when it come ace-ace three. Does he want to try to steal this pot further and lose more chips in this pot? And he checks it also. Last card. Nine of clubs. Nine of clubs. And now here comes TJ. That nine made him a pair of nines. He's going to make a value bet here of 25,000. TJ. Good night, Paul, they say. I think the whole room knew he was hijacking that pot. Paul says, okay, you got me. Yes, I was trying to steal the pot. You go ahead and take it. The, you were best beforehand after the nine hit. Yeah, yeah. TJ will acquire I thought it. thought was. Look at this, a little forced uh, poker talk between the players, uh, pretending like they like each other. Just give it up. Why would Precisely. Yeah, why would nice wouldn't. flush draw, paired up on the end there. I mean, it's just like In the heat of the battle, three players. Here we go again. It's on TJ first. He's on the button. And he's got a big hand this time, Mike. He's got ace-10. 30,000. 30, he's raising it, he said. 30,000 he's coming in for. Paul Phillips studies his hand. He's got a queen 10. He throws it away. Now it's around to Mel in the big blind. Now remember, Mel started this three-handed match with about 33,000. He's built it up now to about 118,000. He's got a king jack in his hand. It's pretty solid. And look at this. He's got that interested look in his eyes. I'm all in. He's all in. I call it. He's going to do it. Over the top. No, TJ no, says, no, I call. Quickly that. called him. TJ read him properly there. TJ, TJ has the best hand with ace 10. Mel has the king jack. So oh. TJ is about a 60% favorite to win this pot. Mel is up. He looks sick about this. He knows he's a big dog. Let's see what happens. Here's the flop. Flop is 7 3 3. TJ's in front so far. Right now, Mel's going to have to have a king or a jack. It's going to be bye bye birdie. Can he get lucky and win this pot? Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour.
In the city of angels, Englishman Mel Judah is looking for an angel named Lady Luck as he's in deep against poker legend TJ Cloutier. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We have a big pot unfolding. TJ has the leading hand at this point with ace-10. Mel's going to have to have a king or a jack. Turn it Not that queen. time. It's a queen on fourth street. Queen comes off. If he doesn't get a king or a jack, he's going to be our third place finisher. Can he survive? Mel Judah. Here we go. Last card coming up. He caught it. He does it. Oh! Unbelievable. Mel Judah doubles up and stays alive at the river. Whoa. It even shocked him to catch a card like that. Hey, you talk about destiny. And look at TJ. He doesn't look like too happy of a camper right now, Vince. I do well on the river, don't I? I just can't get this guy out of here. He's like a fly buzzing around the car that you can't get out. Well, 90, 100. TJ looks disgusted. Well, right now, he's got digestion problems, that's for sure. The fact that he could have been down to two players wow. with the momentum going in. So close. One card he has to catch. Boom, he does it. And now, believe me, they're going to have a tiger by the tail here. Because you give Mel some chips, they're going to be hard to get away from him, believe me. You talk about surviving. This Mel Judah from Australia, he is hanging in there, catching when he can, to the dismay of a great poker player, T.J. Cloutier. Well, Mike, what an awful beat for T.J. right there. Well, you're right, Vance. You know, if Mel goes out there, T.J. and Paul will be just about equal in chips. He'd have moved up at least 150000 in real money. When you stay alive at the river by catching a card like that, the poker gods are smiling on you. No, not sure yet. I will need... TJ Cloutier, if things anybody things. can take a bad beat, he can. And here we go again. It's going to be on Paul Phillips, who looks at a... Jack seven of diamonds on the button. That button once again being the place of the dealer. If a player was dealing, he'd be dealing there when you have the button in front of you. 30. It comes in for 30,000. Well, he's in that great position on the button, and he's going to make a raise. It's the most favorable position in a poker game because you get to act last on all the rounds of betting other than round one. Mel Judas looking at an ace-deuce offsuit. Now look at this, and he's going to call out of position with an ace-deuce offsuit. He's not going to let Paul get away with this. TJ's got a 9-5 to five of spades. He lays it down. TJ and we got two-way action. Ace deuce against Jack seven. Here we go. Jack flop is Jack three. ten three. A nice flop for Paul. He flops the top pair. It's up to Mel first. Check. check. Mel checks. And Paul checks behind him. Very mysterious check to me right there. Deuce on the turn. A and deuce comes on the turn. Now that gives check. Mel a pair of deuces. Mel of course check. checks his deuces. Paul still in front with a pair of jacks. 40. Paul says and Paul 40, now bets 40,000. Oh, yeah, he's coming out. Can't wait all afternoon. Well, what Mel's thinking about now is how could that deuce have helped him? I've got a deuce. Paul would love to get Mel in this. He'd be a big favorite. I'll tell you something about Mel Judah. He's very good at reading people and putting them on hands. Very good. He's also got the patience of Job. He can play a short stack as good as anybody. What is Mel Judah going to do? Come on in. Mel He's Judah all in. What is this? What a bold play by Mel Judah right here. He has gone over the top with the bottom pair, Vince. Big turn of events for him to go all in. And this is just slamming Paul Phillips right back down. Now Paul Phillips sits up in his chair here. He's saying to himself, gee, I checked. I wanted to trap this guy. This thing came back to trap me. We know he's in front. He's got his pair of jacks. So that's separate. 148.5 more. I have top pair. You hear that? Paul says, I've got top pair. Now, Vince, that violates poker ethics here in these tournaments. You're not allowed to call out your hand to your opponent here. Well, he's trying to get a reaction. Well, what's happened here is he's outplayed himself into where he could get bluffed out of this pot. He didn't bet on the flop when he flopped the top pair, and now he's got himself into a quagmire. Tell you one thing, if he calls us, he's gonna love it. He's gonna be in front with the Jacks. And he can break Mel Judah right out of this, put him on a plane back to Australia. You know, Vince, when we can see the cards, you know, it looks like an easy call. But if you're sitting at that table, you know, you feel like your opponent's been trapping you all along in this hand. And look at the expression on Paul Phillips' face. It looks like someone told him he had to take a colonoscopy. 
his fiance Kathleen Fink. Even she's very nervous about this play. Look at Mel, just as statuesque as can be. Well, I'm sure this will make the highlight reel. I fold. He's going to fold another highlight reel hand. Another mistake, actually. He's going to turn down. And and Mel turns up the ace deuce. He shows him the bluff. Oh, he's going to rub it in. Oh, my golly. Don't you remember earlier when he turned up the jack deuce and showed everybody the bluff? Well, Mel turned the tide on him and showed it to him this time. You've got to give Mel credit for making that play. That was an amazing raise by Mel on the turn right there. This is very, very sharp poker we're watching. He thought Paul was fishing around in that pot. He decided to put all his chips in there. Great play right there by Mel Judah. Paul Phillips loves to play poker for giggles, likes to show his hands. Right now, he's not laughing. It has been turned on him. Stay tuned for more exciting action from the Legends of Poker at the Bicycle Casino on the World Poker Tour. We'll be right back. Back to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton along with Vince Van Patten. We are at the finals of the Legends of Poker at the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles, California. And Vince, we have a three horse race right now. Yeah, they're zigging and zagging, momentum swinging back and forth. Well, folks, you are watching some of the toughest tournament players in the world. Very few players in the world have more experience at tournament poker than TJ Cloutier and Mel Judah. And our chip leader is Paul Phillips known as dot-com in the poker world. What a match we're witnessing here tonight, Vince. Yeah, he might be leading right now, but he's definitely not in control. This is anyone's game. Here we go once again. It's got to be on the Australian former hairdresser, Mel Judah, who's picked up a queen nine offsuit. Now he's going to call. He puts in 20,000. TJ gets out in the small blind. Paul Phillips has got a jack 10, Mike. Vince, notice Paul's taking his jacket off. Okay. He says, okay, let's have a flop. So it's jack-10 for Paul, queen-9 for Mel. Here we go. Oh, queen-9-6. This gives Mel the top two pair, but it also gives Paul an open-end straight draw. Oh, this is huge for Mel. Let's see if Paul bites with the open-end straight draw. No, he checks. And Mel has the top two pair. He's going to bet. He's not going to check it. He bets 30,000. Well, this could be the one for him, he's thinking to himself. You got your open-ended straight draw. I'm all in. He's all in, he says. He's going to gamble Mel here. Mel quickly calls. Yes, he does with his two pair. So it's a top two pair against an open-end straight draw. Can Mel hold off an eight or a king? That's what he's got to do to win this pot and double up. Turn is a jack. A jack comes on the turn. That's two more Deuce. outs for Paul. He can catch Deuce. a jack now to win this pot as well as an eight or a king. Deuce. Can it hold up for Mel? It does. Queen comes off. Mel makes the full house. He doubles up. And that pot had some meat in it for Mel there. It holds up. The crowd goes nuts for him. Nearly 360,000 in that pot. Mel has come off the mat where he now has nearly 360,000 chips from 30,000. He was down two once, Vince. And right now, Paul Phillips, Mr. Dotcom, I would bet that he would like to be hiding behind a computer right now. Nice play by Mel right there. He breaks out into a big smile. He's happy about the way he played that hand. And the Melman is delivering. Well, just tremendous poker we're seeing here tonight, Vince. We got three great players going at it here. First prize, $579,000. Who is going to take the Legends of Poker? And I can tell you, Vince, right now it is a three-horse race. Any one of these players can win this tournament. Mel looks at a nine tray. He folds. 60. TJ Cloutier bets 60,000 out of the small blind with the King Jack of Diamonds. Yes, he does. And look at this. Paul's got a real hand. He's got the little pair of fours. Checks it again. Oh, it's tough to throw a pair of fours away. He calls. This could be an interesting one pair of fours against King Jack. So we're going to have a flop here. We've got 126,000 in this pot. Here we go with the flop. 
Ace Queen Jack. Flop comes Ace Queen Jack. TJ checks. Now TJ checks. Now obviously that doesn't help Paul with his measly pair of fours. But TJ checks his pair of jacks. But in Paul's mind, it might be the green light here. Hundred. Look at this, a hundred thousand. He's betting here, Vince. Oh yeah. What an amazingly bold bet by Paul Phillips right there. After TJ checks, he's going to try to take this play away from TJ. Will it work? Paul's betting one hundred thousand. One hundred thousand. Now TJ looks back at his hand. He looks at his chips. He has the bottom pair. He has an ace-high straight draw. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If he goes over the top pole here, he's going to get him out very fast. He's got to lay it down. If he shows the king jack of diamonds to Paul. That's going to make Paul feel even better about betting out hand. Notice Paul doesn't show him what he had. He mucks his hand quietly. And Vince, I got to tell you, I am shocked that TJ would raise before the flop and then check on that flop when it come ace queen jack with an ace high straight draw on a pair. He allowed Paul Phillips to take that pot away from him. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, Paul even got the bonus of seeing TJ's hand. Well done. To give Paul Phillips credit, Vince. I mean, he earned that pot. Well played by Paul Phillips right there. In the poker game of life. Paul Phillips has a huge chip lead. I had a successful internet company, which has left me the luxury of working optional. And then when I was introduced to poker, it looked like about the most fun you can have standing up or sitting down. So I started playing constantly. I decided, since I'm playing cards for fun all the time anyway, why don't I just play cards all the time? High stakes poker for fun. It's a luxury no hardened tour pro could afford. If you're playing for fun, generally you don't make money. Once I was playing poker in the casino, and a gentleman said to me, we're not here to have fun, we're here to play poker. <laughs> I don't care. I'm having a great time. Uh, I'm going to get to be on TV. Uh, I'm going to win a ton of money no matter what happens. And, uh, you know, this is just fun. <laughs> Paul's Paul, you know. Paul, I got history. <laughs> Let's see how he acts when, when the pressure's on him, when he's got a marginal hand. Then we'll find out. That's what it boils down to. I know how to play this stack. I know how to play these players. I know what to do. I think the main point of life is to enjoy your life and to be a good person and to have a good time. And I'm certainly doing those things. Paul will play to the crowd now. I can tell you that. I think he's going to get more energetic and rambunctious and more playful with the crowd as the time goes on, especially if he keeps picking up a few pots. Okay, action's going to be on TJ Cloutier. And he's picked up a, a little pair of deuces. He's in position. He folds his two deuces. Now that's kind of shocking. Now, Paul looks at a nice hand, a king, queen, a spade in the small blind. Yeah, he's got to like that hand. Paul calls 10,000. He just calls. Hey, oh, wow. Now, Mel's no. picked up an ace, queen, Mike. Fantastic hand. Where is 80,000? Right? He raises it at 80,000. He makes it 100,000 to go. I'm all in. He's all in. I call. Mel quickly calls him. He said, okay, if you can beat this, good luck to you. They're going for it here. Two big hands. Mel's got to love this. He's in a dominating position. All right, here we go. The flop is Jack 6 3. Mel's in a commanding position right now. Here's 4th Street. It's a 10. A 10 comes mean? off. Well, that makes Paul open-ended. Well, Paul can win this pot with a 9 or an ace. Here's the last card. It's a 7. He doesn't do it. A 7 of clubs comes off. Now Mel's going to take home a big pot here. Mel Judah has doubled up again. And this time, it's a crippling blow to Mr. Dot Com. A huge mistake for Paul. And let me tell you, Mel, who's been on the short stack this whole tournament, has now taken the lead, Vince. This is quite a turn of events. We are taking a little break. We are at the Bicycle Casino. Stay tuned on the World Poker Tour. We will be right back. Kid, a one-time massive chip leader, now finds himself in a desperate struggle to stay alive against a suddenly unbeatable tournament pro and a living poker legend. Well, Vince, what a turn of events we've had here. 
Mel Judah has come from the short stack, a chip and a chair virtually in this tournament. Anybody can win now. They're all about equal in chips. Andes and blinds have gone up. We're now playing with a $3,000 ante and a $15,000 and $30,000 blind. Look at the sweat on Paul Phillips' head now. He's taking his jacket off. He's gotten a little warm after losing that big pot double nut, well, Mel. This game can do it to you. It makes you sweat. A couple bad plays. You, too, could look like Paul Phillips. It's going to be on Paul. Man, he's got a queen jack. 100. Here comes Paul. He raises it to 100,000 on the button. Nice strong raise by Paul Phillips. But he's coming to the wrong guy because the guy sitting right next to him has got a monster. He's got big, slick, ace, king in his hand. I'm all in. He goes all in with it, too. He's not fooling around. He bets all of his 445,000. TJ's out, and it's up to Paul. And when a man bets you 445,000, and you're looking at Queen Jack, it shrivels up quite a bit, Vince. I gotta just put myself into uh, third and chips. <laughs> you can't blame the guy for raising on the button with a Queen Jack in a three-handed uh, game. All right, you got it. I can't call. I can't. You have to give it up there. He does so. And Mel picks up the pot. And now Mel's a chip leader. We're just having a seesaw battle on every hand in terms of the chip lead, Vince. Mel gives hope to all the women's hairdressers in the world. <laughs> you, too, can come out on the World Poker Tour. If this man can do it, anyone can. Make no mistake about it. Very few in the world are more experienced at tournament poker than Mel Judah. Going to fold a four, do some hearts. And now it's going to be on TJ. 75. Here comes TJ coming in for 75,000, picked up two jacks. Yes, he did, a big hand for TJ. Paul Phillips also has a very good hand. He's got a real hand, pair of sevens here. He sure does. That's a big hand against the other blind. I'm all in. I call. He goes all in with it, and TJ quickly calls. Yes, he does. They're going to go at it. Look at how sick Paul looks now. Oh, that's disgusting. Well, you know you're way up against it. He has way the worst hand. TJ's got the jacks. Paul's got the two sevens. This could cripple Paul if he should lose this. A long shot here. We're going to see a flop. Here it comes. Flop is deuce, ace, five. Flop comes ace, five, deuce. Not going to do it on the flop. He needs a miracle card. A seven. Oh, oh my God. Look at TJ Cloutier. Lightning in the bottle right there for Paul Phillips. Tremendous. He just hit his set. What a horrible card for oh TJ. Oh, my golly. If a jack doesn't come off, TJ's gone. He doesn't get it. That's going to do it. TJ's eliminated. TJ Cloutier took a severe beat right there. That is brutal. TJ Cloutier yeah, I'm out. is going to be eliminated. <sighs> Sorry, TJ. There's nothing new, baby. A horrendous beat. Paul had a few more chips than he did, so TJ's gone. He gets up, he shakes his hand. What a blow for TJ Cloutier right there. And look at this, he's getting a standing ovation from the L.A. crowd. Linda Johnson gives him a hug. The crowd gives him a standing ovation. You can't do any better than get your money in with a hand like that. He's going to take home 146000 but right now that's no consolation prize to him. TJ, I don't mind if you pick up a chair and just throw it. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, an amazing performance here today. TJ Cloutier out in third place. Takes home 146000 This great poker legend walking away. And he's going to go up for an interview with Shauna. TJ, that one must have been hard to take. They're all tough to take, but uh, that's all you can do. Get in with the best and hope. That's poker. My favorite, I'm getting tired of saying it, but that's poker. <laughs> well, Vince, they're about to bring in the cash. If you remember last year, they brought it in on a motorcycle. This year, they're bringing it in on a unicycle. Here he comes. Oh! oh. Well, we had the unibomber at the final table, and we've got the unicycle bringing in the cash, Vince. Here he comes. Oh! There comes Lou Diamond Phillips. Hey, he delivered it to Lou Diamond Phillips. But we're not done yet. Here comes Shauna Hyatt. Hey. Oh, yeah. And look at the money out here. Our own Shauna Hyatt is bringing in the real cash. What a beautiful trophy. Oh, man. A beautiful pile of cash. These two great warriors, after three days, are going after the $579,000 first prize here at the Bicycle Club. So that's what a million and a half dollars looks like. We're talking about heads-up play. 
We got the hairdresser from Australia against Dotcom from San Francisco. Going at it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. We play for big pots, small stakes, and the chance to say, read them and weep. For the weekends, the all-nighters, and the lunch hour, we play for the legends and for the unknowns who dream of winning it all. For the bad beats and the pocket kings, we sometimes have the sense to fold. We play at FullTillPoker.com. We are heads up for the money. Will the rich get richer, or will the mailman deliver a win? Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We are in Los Angeles, California, watching two heavyweights go at it, heads up, here at the Bicycle Casino. Well, Vince, here we go. This is what it's all about. As a poker player, you dream about being in this situation, an opportunity to play for a WPT title. Well, Heads up play, Mike. One of them's going to take home $579,000 and the title. I think you meant come on, Paul. Here we go with the first hand heads up play. Action is going to be on Paul Phillips. And he's picked up a pair of trays on the first hand. Pretty good. Ready. He just calls. Blinds are 15 and 30,000. He calls. Mel says, OK, let's go. Mel has a 9-8. We're going to see a flop. Didn't raise it. Very interesting. Here it comes. Flop is king, ten, deuce. Flop is king, ten, deuce. It's on Mel first. He checks. And Paul Phillips now with a pair of threes. Also going to check. Turn brings another ten. Turn pairs tens. Now there's three clubs on the board and a pair of tens out there. Mel's going to check again. Mel checks. Will Paul bite this time with his threes? Well, Paul's got to think the threes are the best hand right now. You got to think so. And he bets 30,000, and Mel calls. Yes, he does. Now, Mel has the nine of clubs and, and a flush draw. And the seven of clubs gives him a flush. Nothing to be too proud, though, just the nine of club flush. It's true, and he checks. Now, the bad news for Paul is he has no club. It's a very scary card for Paul. I check. Why don't you go ahead and hit it? Mel shows a nine of clubs. He shows the nine of clubs. Paul nods, gives him the pot. First pot, and Mel's going to get very lucky just to be sticking around and happen to hit that lukewarm flush. Mel gets the button. Well, you just wonder, had Paul made a larger bet than 30000 on 4th Street, would he have won that pot? Battle of wits going here, heads up, going for the Legends of Poker Championship. A huge amount of psychology goes into a heads-up game. It's not as much as what you have as what you think your opponent has. There's Paul Phillips now with a jack three of clubs. Can he zig and zag back into this match of this heads-up competition? And this time he's going to raise it, Mike. Yeah, and he's going to make it 90,000 to go. Remember, the blinds are 15 and 30,000. Mel's picked up an ace of club, nine of hearts. Also a good hand. Well, it's a pretty big hand heads up. But your opponent is raised in front of you. He's out of position, as we say. What do you do here with an ace nine? He's going to raise it. Of course you are. 300,000. A big, bold bet right there by Mel Judah. Raising with an ace nine offsuit. Mel Judah has become Paul Phillips' absolute nightmare. Well, right now he's just getting some air time because there's no way he's going to call a $300,000 bet with a jack three. You can be sure of that. This guy has been through the washing machine, spinning around and around. It's really weird. He feels like he's on the high spin dryer right now. And he's going to throw this one away. He mucks it. Mel picks up the pot. You got my number. And the momentum just going to the hairdresser from Australia. This guy is taking control, playing awesome poker. Well, in fairness, he's holding the cards right now, too. You know, every time Paul tries to make a move, he comes over the top and picks up the pot. Believe me, it's not over yet. Paul has a lot of chips left. It's on him to act. Paul looks at his hand. He's got a jack deuce of hearts this time. 
90. He's going to raise it again, Vince. 90,000. He just continues to force the action here. He's got a lot of heart. Mel Judah's got a nine and a seven. Well, that's a pretty big call by him as well, but things are going well for him, so he's going to see a flop. Yeah, he's going to play out that rush. Let's see if he can get lucky with it. Here we go. Flop is a six three. No help to Mel. Paul has flopped a flush draw. Yes, he has. Mel checked. Paul's got four to the flush. And Paul checked behind him. That surprises me, Vince, I got to tell you. Five. Five of diamonds on the turn. Gives both players an inside straight draw. Mel has the bigger straight draw, of course. But he's got to dodge the four hearts if it would come up. Look at Mel's going to check Mel again. Checks. And Paul checks. Hey, you got to figure he could take this pot at this point if he'd have bet it. And the four up. comes off. Oh, my goodness, this gives both players a straight. Mel's got the seven eye straight. He goes all in. What an incredible card. Both players have hit straights. This could be it if he calls it. Now look at Paul Phillips here. He's got the sucker straight, as we say, the low end of the straight. His opponent has moved all in on him. Wow. That's fun. I have a straight. He says, I have a straight. Now, I'll tell you, I don't think that's ethical. I don't think you're allowed to say things like that. But even hearing that, Mel says to himself, please call me now because you must have the sucker straight or you've already been in the pot. Well, this is unbelievable, Mike. Mel has got the big straight. How do you lay down a straight? It's easy to throw it away, Vince. You just pitch it in the muck. You haven't bet anything all through the hand. It's another $526,000 to him. That's a lot of chips he still has left in this tournament. I think this is an easy lay down for him to make. What could Mel have here but the straight? He's not going to bet trips. He's not going to bet two pair. It could only be a stone bluff. That's virtually all Paul can beat right here. Well, if he could make this look on a lay down, this would be one of the great lay downs of all time. How do you lay this kind of hand down? Well, you do have to reflect back. Mel did bluff him earlier and showed it to him. Maybe that's playing on Paul's mind here. But I think it's an easy lay down. I mean, if you just know Mel at all, you know that the guy's fought from the low stack all day. He's taking the chip lead. He's not going to give all his money away on a bluff. It's not going to happen, Vince. If he's got a deuce, he's just going to get his money back. But this is very, very interesting. I can't believe you would dream of playing a seven that way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I only laid down the best hand he wants. Vince, he is thinking and trying to justify how he can call this bet. He's got dot .com talking to himself. Absolutely tortured here. The title at stake, if he makes this call, it will be over. I mean, remember, folks, all he can virtually beat is a bluff here, in my opinion. I think it's an easy lay down, but I know we're looking at the cards, but still. Boy, they'll second guess this decision for 10 years if I call here and I'm wrong. Well, well he's right about that. that much attention to my life, but if they did. You know, it's 526,000 vents. It's a tremendous amount of money. This is an incredible hand that we're witnessing here. What is Paul going to do here? I call. You got me. He he's, calls. He's going to do it. It's going to be over. Oh, I can't yes. believe it. Mel bangs the table. He knows it's over. He wins the Mel pot. The, straight oh, with the, seven. the crowd okay. is stunned. Mel uh, Judah is going to be the uh, Legends of Poker champion. Well, I'm right with the crowd, Vance. I'm stunned also. I think it was an easy lay down. This shouldn't have happened, in my opinion. You know, all you can beat is a bluff in that spot. If your opponent bluffs there, good luck to him. Give him that one little raise. But play on. Paul Phillips, he can't believe it. I don't think he wants to get up from this table. You know, when you think wrong, you think wrong, Vince. Paul Phillips has proved that here today. Paul Phillips, a brilliant poker player. But right now, he wishes he could disappear. Well, what a Hollywood story for Mel Judah, Vince. He started on the low stack. He fought all day long on the low chips. He finally took the chip lead. He came back. He won this tournament. He came off the floor, and he is our champ. And now, let's go to our champion. And what can you say? The Mill Man has delivered. <laughs>
to the mailman, Mel Judah, our champion of the legend of poker here at the Bicycle Casino. Bravo, Mel. He's closed himself up. <laughs> Look at Fred Bagnotti. Look at him just staring Paul down. There it is. Chip Jet has tripled up here almost. A seven. Oh, oh my golly. That is brutal. Look, he's showing the crowd the Jack Deuce. Paul Stone Bluff, ladies and gentlemen. Stone Bluff. Well done. And for Shauna Hyatt, Vince Van Patten, I'm Mike Sexton saying, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the World Poker Tour. Here we go, here we go, Mike. Here, try some of this. Bang, bang. Oh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. The real beauty of the World Poker Tour. You play until you go broke. All in. He says I'm all in. Oh, you're right, oh, you're right, Mike. Oh, you're right, oh, you're right, Mike. Whoa. He's all in. Can you believe this? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Oh. Gone. Out of here. 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 Bang. Gone. Oh, you're right, Mike. That's got to spin. Absolutely. He's all in. All in. Yeah, he's got to love that. Got to love, got to love, got to love that. Well, he says you may have wrote the book and you may be the godfather, but here. Try some of this. Bang. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's got to love that. Show tunes going off in your head. Going off in your head. Got to love that. Whoa. We look forward to seeing you next season on the World Poker Tour. Oh, no, I wasn't ready.